Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to create our own AI chat box using the ChatGPT 3.5 API. It's a simple chat box that can continue conversations. For example, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to call itself R2D2 for this conversation. Let's ask how much revenue Star Wars movies have made so far. Now, let's see if it can remember what name I asked to go by before. Ha! Ah, it remembers that I asked it to be called R2D2. Pretty cool isn't it? For this project, we'll be using React, Tailwind CSS and OpenEye Framework. Hopefully, this tutorial can help you integrate ChatGPT into your own project. Before we start, please kindly like this video and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Let's begin. Select the terminal on VS Code. The node version I'm using is 18.13.0. Let's create a React app by typing in npx create react app followed by project name. Let's name it ChatGPT Chatbox. Let's clear the terminal and cd into the project that we just created. You can see that a sample project has been created. Let's run it now. You should see a working sample React project on your local host. Next, let us set up Tailwind CSS. Tailwind CSS is a utility-first CSS framework packed with classes that can be composed to build any design, directly in your markup. Click the Let's Get Started button. And select the Tab Framework Guides. Look for Create React App and click on it. We already created the React app, let's install the Tailwind CSS. Copy the install code and paste it into your terminal, and click Enter. Next, we need to initialize the Tailwind CSS. Copy and run the code. Once that is done, we need to configure the template paths. Copy this code. Open the Tailwind config and paste the code. We need to add the Tailwind directives to your CSS. So copy the codes. Open the index.css file in the source folder, remove everything, and paste the code. Let's clean up the project by deleting the files we don't need. Also, let's clean up the index.js file. We don't need the vital stuff. Also, we don't need the app.css file. Delete it. Let's clean up the app.js file. We can delete the logo SVG file as well. Let's run the project. You should see an empty white screen. And finally, let us install the OpenAI dependency. The OpenAI Node.js library provides a convenient way to access the OpenAI API from Node.js applications. Let's run the application to see if everything is good. I laid out the windows side by side, so it will be easier for us to see everything going forward. First, let's add a gradient to the background. In the index.css file, add the following. In the HTML tag, set the height to 100%. 
Set background image to radial gradient with circle and farthest corner at 10%-20%. and set two RGBA colors that you like. We will go with something dark. Set background repeat to no repeat, and background attachment to fixed. In the app.js file, let's add some elements. First, we're going to add the input field and the send button. We're going to have it located at the bottom of the window. Let's create a div. In the class name, let's have the following. Fixed position, bottom to zero, background to gray 900, flex, flex center, height to 150 pixel, padding to two, width to full, and MD set padding to eight. Create another div, and set the class name to the following. Margin X to auto, flex, justify between, max width to three XL. Next, create a text area element. Set the type to text. Set a placeholder. Set value to nothing. On change handler to nothing. On key down handler to nothing as well. In the class name, add the following. Flex grow, padding to two, rounded corners to large, margin right to two, width to 70 viewport width, MD to text extra large. Let's add a button next to the text area. Set the class name to the following. Background to blue 600, text white, width full, max width 80 pixel, uppercase, X padding to 4, Y padding to 2, rounded corners to large, hover, background blue 900, MD to text 2 XL, MD to max width 150 PX. You can see the blue button on the right now. Let's add a label to it. The button looks good. Clicking on it won't do anything at this time. We'll add the functionality later on. Let us import some components. We will need few things from React, use state, use effect, and use ref. Next, we will need some components from OpenAI. The way we define this is by using const. We will need configuration and OpenAI API. Let's configure the OpenAI. Create a const variable and name it configuration with lower caps. The variable should equal a new configuration, with a capital C. Inside this, we define the API key. The process environment React app OpenAI key is a global variable we will declare next. Next, we need to initialize the OpenAI with the configured key we defined above. Spelling mistake. Let's fix that. Let us set up the global variable for the API key. We first need to create an environment file in the root folder. Write the global variable name followed by an equal sign. Now, we need to create an API key on the OpenAI website. Navigate to the OpenAI website, platform.openai.com, and log in or create an account there. Click on your profile located at the right top corner and select the view API keys. Now, click on the create new secret key button. This will create an API key for you. If it's your first time, OpenAI will give you a free $15 credit. Copy the key and paste it into the environment file for the variable you defined. In the app.js file, let's create a few use states. First we'll need input and set input state. This will hold the user's input. Next, we'll create a message and set message array state. This will hold the message that will be sent and retrieved from OpenAI API. Finally, we need a Boolean state to handle the preloading when the API is retrieving the data. We need to create a handler to handle the user input. So let's create a function and call it on submit action. If there is no input it will return and do nothing. We will set the isThinking preloader to true. Set and append the set messages with the following formatted request.
The message we send to the OpenAI should follow this format. It must define the role. The human role is the user, and then the user's inputted message. Now, if you type anything, it will crash. We need to set a few things. First, the value should point to the input state. And the send on click needs to call the on submit action. Still having compile issues. We need to update the on change handler in the text area. It needs to update the set input state whenever a key is inputted. And finally, initialize the on key down handler to listen for the enter key. If the input state is not empty then call the on submit action. If we type something now, it doesn't break. Let's have the input show up on the screen. Create a div with the following classes. Relative, max width to 3xl, margin x to auto, minimum height for calculating the difference of 100 viewport height minus 150 pixels. Padding bottom to 170 pixel. Background to black. Background opacity to 10. Now we need to loop through the messages state. Let's create a map array. Inside the map array, Let's create a div and set the key to I index. And set the classes to the following. Adding 3. Max width to full. Text to white. Margin Y to 2. Margin left to auto. If the message role is not equal to assistant, change the background color to blue 600. The role will be either user or assistant. Assistant is open AI. Have the message content display. Now you can see the user's input on the screen. Next, let's set up the OpenAI call. Create an asynchronous function, call it, and call OpenAI API. Set the set input to empty. Create a try and catch statement. Create a const variable, completion. Create an await statement for OpenAI create chat completion. We need to initialize the create chat completion. First, the dataset model we're going to be using. There are many models that are available. It's available on their site documentation. I will have the link below. We're going to be using the GPT 3.5 as it's the cheapest among the others. The model we will be using is GPT 3.5 Turbo which is $0.002 per 1k tokens. You can use the latest GTP4 if you like. Type in GPT 3.5 Turbo as the model type. Or whatever you ended up choosing. Set the messages to messages state. Max tokens to 500. That's like 500 words max. And temperature keep it zero. Temperature controls the randomness of the generated text. A value of zero makes the engine deterministic, which means that it will always generate the same output for a given input text. Set thinking preloader to false. And append the set messages to API returned message. The format is returned as data.choices. The choices is an array. So we just need the first message on the catch. 
we need to set set thinking to false and have a few console log messages just in case there is an error in the API. We need to initiate the open AI API call. We need to do this in the use effect whenever the message state is updated. If the input is not empty, it will call the call open API function. Seem like an error appeared. Look like a spelling mistake. It should be message, not messages. You can see now, the chat GPT is responding back to my message. Pretty neat. I added a preloader function to hold the spinning SVG. I set the font to white and the opacity to 70. You can find the SVG on the Flowbyte website. You can just copy and paste the code from there. They have different colors as well. I will have a link to the site below. I also added scroll to bottom function. This will scroll the website to the latest message. This is good when the conversation gets pretty big. Need to call the scroll to bottom in the use effect. We need to initialize the messages end ref with use ref at the top. and create a div, right after the map array, and reference to the messages end ref variable. For the preloader, create a div with the preload svg function when his thinking state is true. This will show the preloader when the API is taking time to respond. And finally, I created a welcome message to display when it first loads. It's only visible if the messages state array is not empty. Let's run this and see it now. You can see the intro message welcoming the user. When you type something, it disappears. It shows the preloader followed by the AI response. Pretty cool right? This is the final product. Let's ask the AI who won the Super Bowl in 2000. And now let's ask what date this took place. Let's ask what was the weather like at that time. It's pretty cool that it kept the same conversation going. Alright folks. That's all for this tutorial on chat GPT API. I hope you found it helpful and informative. And if you're anything like me, maybe even a little bit cool. I'm curious to know if you're planning to use chat GPT in any of your future projects. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it and if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome tutorials and AI related content. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.